Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a walkthrough on how to do a motion control to charger damper. So the first thing you'll need is a charger damper. We picked the RockShock Charger 2.1 RC2 for the Yari Lyric chassis. You'll need various sizes of wrenches, various sizes of Allen wrenches, a shock pump with a number gauge, 35mm flanges of seals, dust wipers, and crushed nuts. We got the SKF ones. Shram butter, but you can use alternatives like slick oleum. Some sockets. I would highly recommend getting a chamferless socket to reduce the chances of rounding the head out. A spray bottle of IPA with some shop towels. Some zero weight 30 oil. It is a different oil if you're doing this swap on a non 35mm chassis or a boxer. We used a syringe to measure the amount of oil to put back into the lowers, but you can also use a measuring cup. Retaining ring pliers, a pick, a rubber mallet, a torque wrench, a bike stand, safety glasses, some type of oil pan, we used a paint roller tray, a dowel to help us clean the tubes, and a cassette lock ring tool. Slowly remove the air from the fork so that the air from the negative spring can be released. If you do it too fast, you will trap air in the air spring making it dangerous to service the fork. To make sure all the air is out, you can push the fork down while holding the pressure release valve on the pump. Turn it counterclockwise. So like, uh, so if you're looking at it like this, then like you're turning it out. And then you're basically gonna count how many clicks till you get to the fastest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. Oh, so it's like my, um, uh, what do you call it? My other stand. Yeah. Do you have a trick for keeping all the stuff together? <clears throat> If you wanted to do it, I could record you. Rusty. The star nut is. Do you just let it hang? And then I'll just hold this. Remove the rebound knob by pulling it towards yourself. This fork had oil squirting out because the crushed nut washer was deformed. So you just break them free like 
I go all the way out till they come out and I thread them in halfway. Okay. Because I don't want to be hammering with like one thread. One thread in, in there, yeah. Like that. Mm hmm. There's no crush washer on this. <laughs> God. Okay. I'm just drop them in here. Push up mine. You can see how dirty the oil is. The rebound slide has very little oil as it was leaking, but eventually some came out when we fully freed the lowers. You can see the fork has not had a service in a while. I mean, there's some of it. A little bit. <laughs> That's dirty. Good thing we're replacing the damper. <laughs> yeah. Like a pipe or something that you use to shove in there along with the rack. We put some zero weight 30 oil into the jar, then put the foam rings in the jar to soak. This thing isn't under pressure, right? It's not like this side where you have to make sure the air is out. No. Okay. Pop up and like hit us. That'd be bad. Yeah. That doesn't look too dirty. Yeah. That's most of it. Okay. Put this back in. Actually, it would probably be easier if we do this. This position. You can use that for leverage to push the damper back in. You want it real easy. Okay. Two hands here. Grab. Okay. Okay. Now you can use the bolt that we screwed in as leverage. And then really just pull this out at this point. Make sure to pull carefully as oil will most likely fly everywhere. Oops. Oil everywhere. <laughs> PVC pipe too. Just something that's thin. Okay. 
Just don't crease it. It doesn't stay too, so. Okay. Make sure to hold the low speed compression knob while you're tightening the screw because if you don't, the low speed knob will tighten with the screw. Our screw seized because the screw pushed the knob past the quicking point and that's why we had to unstick it. <laughs> wow. Good grip. There's enough room for this jaw thing to get in there. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now you want to pull the air shaft out of the tube. This fork had negative air trapped in the air spring, so we had to give it a good pull. Make sure to wear safety glasses. The retaining ring has a rounded and sharp side. Make sure the sharp side of the ring is faced outwards. This will help with easier removals for the next time you service your fork. The only way you can tell if it's in is you can put it, your tool in there and just see if it'll slide around. Well, does that mean it doesn't come out? Hmm. It should be fine because there's going to be oh, some when I pump it up, right? Up. Yeah. yeah. Most of the time, if you do your services on time, you can just clean them out and then reuse them. What do you think? I wouldn't use those though. Nice. Using a Pedro's tire lever, we pried the seals out. Make sure to get directly under the seal or else the tire lever will keep slipping. They are very tight in there, so you will need to use a good amount of strength. Oh. I mean, is it supposed <laughs> to be like that? So violent, yeah. <laughs> okay.
You need. I used to hammer. Oh. Huh? Oh, car already went in. I think it's tapered, so then it goes in evenly, and then you gotta hammer the rest in. It's almost flush. Get in the groove. Fold it in, or is it good? Good. I'm assuming that groove goes in this groove, right? I think, or does it go this way? like there's that little groove for it to go into. Oh yeah. Uh, that way it doesn't explode like that. Oh, it's not a pain to get on with this, huh? 